they feel rejected by God due to the things that they went through. And did you think that God was guilty for all of this? No, I didn't think that God was to blame. But I thought that there was something very wrong with him that would let him allow those things to happen to me. So in the same way, I felt rejected by my father and my mother. It was as if God also had rejected me. But on the outside, you would put up this strong woman mask because you grew up, you had your own career. And dad, many women even seem to be strong women that don't have any problems and that are secure in themselves. But all the things that Marcia said happened inside of her. That's why it's so hard to help someone like this, because apparently she does not show her need, her weaknesses. Like the Women's International Day, so many women raise their flags, chanting for the feminist movement, but on the inside, that's not helping. It's not bringing any options to women. And she thinks if she has more rights, the more she is in the spotlight, the more she can do, the more she will be able to fill the void she has inside of herself. And for as much as she may have or do, nothing is able to fulfill her. So, Marcia, so you were 12 when you were molested, right? So you were ravished by someone close to you and your life was totally given to... You are like baptized into this complex because once you are molested by somebody, your pain, your suffering wasn't small, it was great. Now it was even bigger. It made it complete, complete suffering because you became uh, a very insecure, very afraid child because you did not have someone to help you and even think that you were the dirtiest girl in the world. Exatamente. E a forma de lidar com isso foi justamente o que a Cristiane falou. Por dentro, eu era uma pessoa extremamente insegura, fraca, Exactly. And the way they deal with this was what Cristiane just said. On the inside, I was extremely insecure, weak, sensitive. But I had to survive, so I needed to put up a strong personality a personality that no one would be able to touch or take advantage of again. So, I would show people this image of a person who was secure, who had conviction of what she wanted. So I had my objectives. I would fight for my career, but no one knew what would go on inside of me. Because every woman that goes through this kind of abuse, she carries the marks of, of this in her character. She has this need to be validated by others, by everyone around her by her career, by her friends, her looks, her money. But inside of herself, she still is insecure. And that was the story of my life. I was advancing in my career. By the age of 17, I had my first full-time job in a multinational company. I was beginning college at the same time. But this was all just me putting up a front. Because on the inside, I was sensitive and I was miserable. I would look in the mirror and I would hate myself. I hated mirrors. You thought you were ugly, right? I had short hair, I wore ugly clothes, and I always dressed in dark colors. I thought I had no value. But how is that possible, Marcia? I wanted to understand, and I think most people want to understand as well, many women are feeling the same, or what, what their problem is. How is it possible for someone who is doing well in their school, somebody who is intelligent, working for a multinational company, having a brilliant future ahead, still have this incomplete life, making them feel horrible on the inside, making them feel like garbage on the inside? How is that possible? Because who I was on the inside was really who I was. And all the things that I tried to accomplish in my life were only so that I could have some value in myself. But nothing can compensate the weakness and the frailty that I had inside of me. Very well. Marcia, tomorrow, if it's possible, 
You're going to come back here again, and we are going to talk with our friends. Christiani is going to be here as well, and we're going to proceed with your testimony to make in these next few days this conscience of why women have been inferiorized by themselves because it's like a, a mark made by made by sexual harassment by a father brother sister whoever or maybe being penalized by uh, a love gone wrong the aggression that is going on inside the home domestic violence things of that sort they love each other but they can't stay together because it's a lot of violence they get hurt black eyes broken ribs literalmente apanha por causa do ciúme doentio do sujeito. Enfim, nós vamos falar... We are going to talk, and we're going to keep this subject so that all women, you women, I'm referring myself to you especially, you young women who are growing up now and you are having the same symptoms that Marcia once had. So we want to help you. We don't want to simply have a meeting to show your strength or to show how many people we can gather, like the Women's International Day. No, we want to do something that will change your mind, that will change your thought process. If you change your mind, everything will change. Your life will change. And to change your mind only with the mind of God, with the power of God, only with the power of God. Jesus came to bring freedom to women. He came to bring women to their place. A couple of days ago, we were talking about this subject with Christiani, and we talked about a woman who brought an alabaster box to Jesus. She manifested her faith, her love, her value, recognizing that before Jesus, showing that before Jesus. And that perfume wasn't just any kind of perfume. The single women in those days would keep this perfume for their wedding day. That was a tradition among the Arabs and the Jews. And she would give this perfume to her husband. So when she poured that at Jesus' feet, and she would give this perfume to her husband. So when she poured that at Jesus' feet, it was as if she would say that Jesus was more important than the only person who would give me value, which would be her husband. But it's good for people to understand, for us to talk about a single woman in the past had this dream of being married. Her only dream was to get married and have kids. So her future husband, her fiancé, would have the pleasure of having a wife that her perfume was unique. No one had that perfume. That perfume was separated. It was, it was unlike any other aroma that they had in that time. And it was very, very precious. That alabaster box that she poured upon Jesus' feet, that was priceless because she was gathering that for years so that she could have that for her wedding night. Because you know that the woman would place that perfume upon themselves and when the husband would smell that fragrance, he would know that it was his wife. So women had these, these fragrances, these alabaster boxes. That's something that was very precious. She didn't have a treasure chest, but she would place it in a very, very protected place. Cofre, 
Ora, quando ela viu Jesus, when she saw Jesus, she poured that alabaster box upon him, showing that she saw Jesus as her first love. And you see today that we talk about her, it's like it gives us goosebumps because it moves any human being. We feel the great love that she had towards Jesus. This in exchange for what Jesus had done for her, the value that he had given her. Through that action, she was giving herself to Jesus for what Jesus had done for her, while there were some others there who criticized her, especially Judas, who was saying that she could have sold that perfume and given it to the poor. Jesus, on the other hand, honored her gift. Jesus did not see it as a waste. No, he honored it, so much so that until today we talk about this woman. It was like a wedding. She got married with Jesus there. Even if she would not get married to anyone else and lived a single life for the rest of her days, she would still be happy for what had happened. In that moment, she was electing Jesus as her husband. Powerful. It's very powerful. What a heart she had. What great expression of faith and love she had towards Jesus. Because what had Jesus done in her life? She was grateful for what he had done for her, a very great miracle. Pai, that woman saw the value that Jesus gave women, because in those days no one gave value to women. Jesus was the only one who listened to women, who helped women, who talked to women, because no one would talk to women. That's right. The women had to stay far from the men. Even the adulterous woman, Jesus forgave her and gave her value, even after what she had done. My friends, when we talk about women, you have a great value. You are very precious to Jesus. It doesn't matter your social status, your color. It doesn't matter your religion. It doesn't matter where you came from, your nationality, your culture. None of that matters. You women, Jesus has a great, great value to you. You have no idea. You have no idea how he considers you, how much he wants to transform you and remove that spirit that makes you captive to your feelings that makes you feel like garbage and carry those scars from the past. He wants to do something new to you. And on that, on that Saturday, April 19th, we're going to have this great gathering of faith. The men are invited as well. It's very good to be there, all of us together. We're going to give you the address soon. But this day will be dedicated to women. And we will show women who have been raped, abused, have been sacrificed, that were battered. But they overcame all that because they had this pact with the Lord Jesus. Esse casamento que fizeram com o Senhor Jesus. Elas elegeram Jesus. They elected Jesus as their first love, and then their life changed. And it's a solution for you who are suffering, who are hearing me and are suffering, because we don't want to simply show you problems. We want to show you the solution to the problems. We show you the problems to show you as well the solution to all those problems. But the choice is solely yours, it's not ours. April 19th, it's the W day. The day that women will be new women. 
We're going to appeal to God with all of our strength. May God bless all of you in the name of the Lord Jesus.